share my screen. And I'm going to go to my little presentation that I prepared for you guys. Hi, Claire. Hi, Louise. How are you? I'm, I apologize. Uh, I had to reboot my system. That's all right. So now um, I have started the recording and I've muted everybody. So you can mute yourself. We're gonna, we have a class on perspective and I'm going to start the explanation now. Okay, great, thank you. Welcome to class. So this is, this is a class on concepts of perspective. And I've prepared this little uh, slideshow for you guys. I'm trying to make sure that you guys can see it. So can you see class concepts of perspective? Can you go like this if you see it? Yes. Yeah. Okay, very good. All right. So starting with, oh, it's the wrong one. I opened the wrong one. Sorry, guys. I have one that's a little bit. Uh, yes, this is better. Okay. All right. See, if I had to put my my uh, website on here. All right. So uh, this scene here is a scene from Geneva. I went there a few years ago. <clears throat> excuse me, and the lake there on the left hand side is Le Lac Le Mans, which is a lake right uh, by Geneva. And um, I chose this picture here because uh, you can see this pathway. It's almost like if you're standing on a railroad track, it goes to a very fine point towards uh, the back of, of the screen. So it's very wide here. It's almost half the bottom of, um, of the frame. And it goes to a very skinny point here uh, towards, the, uh, towards the middle of the, of the frame. This little skinny point here is called the vanishing point. And you can see the rock wall here, this one, the rocks, they're very wide here at the bottom of the frame. And then they go to a very, they, like they disappear here at, uh, um, at this point, at, at the area where the vanishing point is. And it's the same thing about these trees. These trees here that are a little bit more, if I go and try to make this a little bit bigger, oops, cancel. So if you see these trees here, so this one here that is cl uh, closer to the right is taller than, than one that is closer to the big tree here, because it's, it's again, it points towards this here, which is the, the area where we have uh, the vanishing point. So if I show you the next slide, I should try and... Um, Okay, so if I show you the, the next slide here, you can see I've put the horizon line. So the horizon line is where the water meets the, the faraway mountains. And the vanishing point is always on the horizon line. The horizon line is determined by uh, the viewer's eye level. So someone who would be standing on the pathway which when I took this photo, that was me. I was sitting, standing on the pathway and I took the photo. And at this, at this level was where my eye were, my eyes were at the horizon line level. And you can see the pathway starts big at the bottom and both sides on, of the pathway, they both converge to this vanishing point. And the trees here that are very big here on the right hand side, they grow smaller and smaller and smaller as they go back. And the, the angle of them is also towards the vanishing point. And same thing with the rock wall and the little cement wall here. They both grow into a very skinny uh, dot at, you know, at the far end 
which is where the vanishing point is. So is there any questions about this, um, this explanation? Okay, so now I'm going to show you another example of a photo that I took also on the same trip. This one was in Paris. It, saw, it says the restaurant's name is Chez Marie or Chez Marie, Chez Marie, and the gallery is Gallery Valérie Valentini. So I took this photo because I really like the yellow and, and red buildings, little storefronts. And if you can look here at the sidewalk, the sidewalk is inclined uh, going up, whereas the top of these storefronts, they're inclined going down. So they point towards an imaginary uh, point that would be here outside the frame in this case. So if I sh go to the next uh, photo, so here I put the vanishing point. So in this case, the vanishing point is outside the frame uh, because the lines, they point towards an area that is over here. So the sidewalk points to the vanishing point, both areas, you know, both sides of the sidewalk and also the top of the storefronts, the angle points to there. And there's a door here in this area with two columns, white columns on either side. Well, the top of the columns, they also point towards the vanishing point. So when doing a scene, a street scene, if there are angles like that, um, trying to understand where the vanishing point is. If you have a photo, uh, you can put it on a piece of paper and draw those lines, and this will help you understand which angle those, you know, those doors and windows and, and, and whatever lines there are, what angle they should be at. Any questions on this? All right, so then I took another photo of the same scene, but this time I was standing further away. So you can see the two little storefronts here and how the sidewalk is going up here towards uh, just the back. And the top of those storefronts, they're inclined towards the bottom, but not as much as before. And they all point towards here. And if you look at the sidewalk on the other side of the street, this here, the line, this line here, also points towards a vanishing point. And you can see there are some buildings up here. So I'm just gonna make this a little bit bigger so you can see it. Oops, sorry. So see here on the right-hand side, there are buildings. And if you were to do a line that would line up the rooftops, it would also point towards around here. So what I did on the next slide is I put the lines to indicate the vanishing point. So the horizon line in this case is approximately here. The vanishing point is on the horizon line and to determine where it is, I made those lines. So I made the line for the sidewalk on this side, sidewalk on the other side, the building here, this, this this, the, the, where the, the, the story divider is here. There's this building here, the rooftop points down there. And the rooftop of the buildings on the right-hand side, they also point down here. And I could have done many more lines, like I could have done a line that goes from here towards the vanishing point, uh, this line here towards the vanishing point. So everything, even the rooftop here, they point towards the vanishing point. Now, in this case, the vanishing point is on our, pick, on our frame and it applies to both sides. Like on this side, I couldn't do the sidewalk that was close to the building just because there's these trees and this other structure here. But the buildings would line up and would also point towards the vanishing point. Any questions here? All right, well, let's make it interesting then. Here is a perspective with two vanishing points. So this building is uh, L'Arc de Triomphe. This is in Paris. 
<clears throat> and if you look at the top where the roof line is, so the roof line on the right hand side goes down this way, whereas the roof line on the other side goes down the other way. So, and then it's true for all the lines. So if I were to look at this line, this detail, so this one goes towards the bottom here, whereas if I look on the right-hand side, it goes towards the bottom this way. So in this case, there are two vanishing points. If I were to look at this one, um, so you can see I put in yellow and in red, the two different vanishing points and how the lines point towards the vanishing point on either side. So this in the horizon line, this is the eye level is right here and both vanishing points are on the horizon line. So this building here is a, like a rectangular building, but it's similar to a house. So when you're looking at a house sideways, uh, oftentimes there are two vanishing points, one on either side. Is there any questions on the concepts of vanishing point? Okay, um, so I did a little drawing. This is my drawing here without the lines. And then I showed how there is a vanishing point, um, the horizon lines about here. And these lines, they all point towards the vanishing point. And here at the bottom, the sidewalk is curved because the street was curved. So I can't really use this to show how it points to the vanishing point because the line here, you can see the line, it really isn't following the, the sidewalk. And the reason being that this sidewalk was curved, the road was curved. So in a case where the road is curved, you can't really use that to apply this concept. But this is a little street in Geneva, right above uh, where Lac Le Mans is. So in summary, the vanishing yeah. point, Yes, yeah, there's a question. How did you determine the horizon line in that last picture? Ah, well, <clears throat> this is a picture that I did from a photo. And when I was standing to take the photo, my eye level was right here. Okay. It was at this level. Okay. So this is how the horizon line is determined, the eye level of the viewer. Okay, thank you. That's a very good question. Um, so concepts, vanishing point is always on the horizon line. Uh, the horizon line is at the viewer's, eye, the viewer's eyes level. I should say maybe high level, right? Anyway, or eyes, I don't know, not sure. Anyway, um, the vanishing point could be outside the frame and there could be two vanishing points. Now, we're gonna have some fun and go back to here and draw this. Um, so I'm gonna stop the share at this time and let's pause the record. To start this, uh, this uh, to start this drawing, what we're going to do is we're going to put the horizon line. And because you can't see the photo, I have to tell you where to put it. Now the height of my book is Three, uh, nine inches and the width is 12 inches. So I'm gonna put the horizon line at four inches from the bottom. So I measure here. I put a little line here, four inches and I do the same thing on the other side, mark. And then I use my ruler To, to put a line there, straight line across. This horizon line has to be completely horizontal. It cannot be, um, it cannot be uh, like uh, inclined because it won't read right. So 
Claire, did you say that was four inches up from the bottom? Right. Okay. Yeah. Once this is done, um, I'm guessing this is probably done by now. Now we are going to indicate the path. And to indicate the path, um, we have to know where the vanishing point is. In this case, uh, we're gonna put the vanishing point one third this way. That means from the right, we're gonna measure four inches and we're gonna put the vanishing point there. So I'm gonna measure four inches to here. So I have my mark and I'm gonna put an X here. And it's, a, it's not a bad idea to indicate that, oops, not this way, that this is the vanishing point. So I'm gonna go like this and put an arrow and say, this is the vanishing point. And this here is the horizon line. So the vanishing point is four inches from the right. So like so. Now that we have the vanishing point, to start uh, to draw our path, okay, I'm looking at the photo and I can see this. The path starts from the corner here and goes to the vanishing point. So we're gonna draw a line and I'm gonna put my book sideways because this easel prevents me from doing it any other way. And I'm gonna go and draw a line like this from the corner. Oops. <laughs> I have technical difficulties with my easel. The next part of the path, so the path goes like this. And so I'm looking at the photo right now and I can see that the other part of the path goes like this. It's not quite vertical. It's a little bit to, uh, to the left of this vertical line if there were one. So from this, the right side of the book, we're gonna do a mark here at the bottom that will be five inches from the right. So I measure five inches. If it's five and a half or four and a half, I mean, it's no big deal. And with this mark, I'm gonna do a line like this to the vanishing point. So now I have my pathway. If I'm going too fast, let me know. But I'm going to continue now and put the next step. Um, just unmute yourself and tell me, oh, oh, you know, so that I can slow down. But um, now we have the pathway here and um, I'm gonna add the area that, that is the cement wall and also um, the, the rocks. And to do that, I'm gonna measure uh, and I'm gonna put my mark this time from the left-hand side. And this is all approximate and you're just, you know, you're just following my lead, but when you do it, when you're looking at the photo, then you can just decide, you know, which, which, how much distance there is. In this case, we're gonna say uh, this line here uh, is gonna be, hmm, uh, we're gonna do four inches from the right. So we're gonna, uh, from the left. So we're gonna measure four inches about here and do a line like this from this mark to the vanishing point. And 
here, this will be the rocks. Actually, you know what? Four inches is not quite enough, but we're going to make it work. Um, this will be, no, that's not, I'm sorry. If you haven't done it, don't, don't do this. I think we need a little bit more room for this. So I'm going to move this line. I'm erasing it. I'm making my line very, very dark so that you guys can see it very well on the screen. But um, if you if you are doing it in your book, you don't necessarily have to do all these marks very dark. So I uh, apologize. We're going to do this line. We're going to do it actually from the left hand side. We're going to measure three inches. This will give us more room. Don't do it. Don't put me. So from the left to here, three inches, and I'm drawing from the vanishing point to the three inch mark. Okay. Um, when I'm doing this, let's say I were on location right there in Geneva by the Lac Le Mans, and I were doing this drawing. Um, what I would do is I would use the angle of my pencil to determine if I had the right angle. So I would, I would put my pencil in front of you know, the angle of the, the rocks, for example. And then from that, I would move it to my book and say, okay, is that the right angle? In this case, I'd say, oh, no, not quite. But um, in the case of this exercise, you're just following my lead. So that's how you get the angles. And I'm not trying to do the exact same angle as on the photo. I'm, I'm trying to do the dis use measurements um, in this case. All right, so now we have, in this space, we have the cement wall and also we have the rocks. And the cement wall is not as wide as the rocks. Now between these two points, we have four and a half uh, inches. And uh, so we're gonna determine the width of the cement wall. From this line here, the one that's right in between this line, we're gonna measure an inch and a half to the left. So actually a, an inch and a quarter is better, yeah, this way. And from this mark to the vanishing point, we're gonna do a line. So this becomes, it's the top of the cement wall. This becomes the rocks. Oops. This is the water. This is our path. This is the grass. And I'm going to show you close. So we have the rocks here, the cement wall, the water. We have our path. This is the grass. But this cement wall right here, because the light comes from this way, it casts a shadow on the path. So we're going to also uh, draw the shadow area of the cement wall. So we're going to. To the right of the cement wall, we're going to measure three quarter inches. Like this. And have this also go towards the vanishing point. It gives me an almost vertical line. So this here, oops, sorry. This here is the shadow. So it's just lines, but uh, putting the names of each surface helps us understand what everything is.
and um, there's another. Am I am I going too fast here? I think I'm gonna give you a minute to finish. Yeah, so now I'm going to share my screen again so you can look at the photo um, to put the tree in. So share my screen to show you the photo. So now <clears throat> by looking at this, uh, we can review together you know, all the elements. So we have the background mountain here, the blue one on the left. And then uh, there's the mid-ground grouping of trees or mountain that is here at the horizon line and grows big here. I didn't do all these individual trees. I'm just ignoring all of that. And I'm ignoring also this mid-ground tree, the one that's behind the big tree. We're going to add the big tree, um, but we have the street here. We have the grass. We have our pathway. We have the shadow casted by the cement wall, the top of the cement wall, the rock wall, and we have the water. And come to think of it, I think we're going to go with this. Yes, this is better. So this is closer a little bit. Um, now is the time to put the big tree. So to put the big tree, <clears throat> note how the width of the base of the tree trunk is very equivalent to the width of the cement wall that we have here on the front. Okay, so when doing a, a drawing, it's very important to compare uh, to compare everything. So, what is the width of a tree trunk? Well, it's it's very equivalent to what we have in terms of the width of the cement wall in this area. So, whatever width we have, I think we made it an inch and a quarter. We're going to make the base of the tree an inch and a quarter. Now, how low from the horizon line is our big tree? Well, the horizon line is where the water meets the mountain right here. Well, it's, uh, it's very close. It's very close. It's a lot closer to the horizon line than it is to the bottom of the frame or the bottom of the photo. So I would suggest that one inch below the horizon line, that's where you put the foot of the tree. And very close to you know, our pathway and make the bottom of the tree one inch wide. So. If I were to demonstrate, I'm going to stop the share, show you how I would do it. So I'd measure uh, one inch from the horizon line about here. And my pathway is an inch and a quarter. I mean, the cement wall. So it would be about this wide. And I know that my tree, the bottom of the tree is a little bit on an incline. So I'm going to make it like this. And that's my tree trunk. I mean, on the photo, there are more, there are two trees together. We're just going to do one. And having the tree branches go outside the frame and up um, outside the frame at the top. Um, this will help make the tree appear um, big and in the foreground. So I'm not putting all of the branches. I'm just indicating a few. And 
Now I have to remove this. So now I have my big tree. Now if I find it's a little too big, perhaps, I can trim it a little bit. Uh, a tree should never be drawn with a ruler because a tree is never straight. There's always, you know, uh, irregular, irregularities, organic shapes, basically, is what I should say. And like Bob Ross would say, trees are always happy. So I'm just going to trim it a little bit on this side because I made it too big. There, this looks better. Now, very important, a tree. So my tree looks funny. And the reason being that it's wider here than it is here. A tree never grows to be bigger than the width at the bottom. So I would have to fix this for my tree not to look so, so weird. Another important concept about trees is that when a big tree trunk divides into multiples, like in this case, into two, the sum of these two should equate the width of the original tree trunk. So in this case, this is becoming too wide here. So I'm going to fix that so that my tree doesn't look too weird. I'm just going to go like this. Better. So this already looks a little bit better in terms of the tree. I'm going to share the photo of our scene. And I'll give you 45 minutes until quarter of two, uh, quarter of three, sorry, to do um, to do the, the drawing. I'm going to do a demonstration of the rocks. And be, to start the demonstration on how to do the rocks, I will first show you these rocks and I'm zoom in on the rocks. So here I've zoomed in on the rocks and right now all we have is we have a line that indicates this side of the cement wall and we have a line that indicates the other side of the rocks and it's straight on our drawing. Now we can see when I do a close up that some of the rocks are sticking out um, from, from this line. So let's see if I went to this. Yes, this is good. So if I go here and I do a close up on the rocks. So you can see that even though I draw a line here that goes towards the vanishing point, the rocks, because they're uneven, sometimes they're sticking out a little bit like this. And sometimes the water is actually on the inside of the line. But overall, if we look at the rock wall, this rock wall as a whole, it's pretty much a straight line. It's if you average it out, this is what it looks like. So that's why we started with a line. Now, when, um, when drawing the rocks, um, you have to think of the rock as it's, it's like, it's almost like boxes, but they're not uh, square boxes. They're, you know, boxes that have uneven top uneven sides and uneven, you know, back end. Um, there are all sorts of different shapes, but you can think of boxes. And when looking at a box that is, that is in the light, well, the sun comes from the left. So it points in this direction. And this is why this cement wall here 
cast a shadow on the pathway to the right of, of the cement wall. Same thing with these rocks. These rocks are in the light, the full sun, and the right hand side of the rocks are in the shadow. Now, is the rock, are the rocks lighter or darker than the, you know, than, than the, the water? Well, in this case, if you squint, they are very similar, except if I were to do this over here, this rock that's in the middle, it's a dark rock. It's definitely darker than the water. Whereas if you look over here, the top of the rock that's sticking out here, it's lighter than the water, but the side is definitely darker than the water. So in order to, to draw my rocks, what I'm, I'm going to make the decision that, oops, sorry. I'm going to make the decision that my water, especially here at the bottom of the, of the picture, is darker than the rocks. And then when I get to here, where the rock is darker, I'm going to say that the, the water is lighter. So if I were to go here, where there are no lines, and do a close up on the rocks. Just trying to make sure that I position it Oops, so you guys can see, okay. It's just hard. Okay, here. Um, so in nature, nature does things very, very nicely because it always creates shapes that are uneven. And in a case where we have rocks that are closer to the viewer and the rocks that are further away from the viewer, well, the rocks in the front are definitely bigger than the rocks that are in the middle or even the rocks that are at the end here, closer uh, to the horizon line. And so therefore, when doing rocks like this, in order to um, try to avoid being overwhelmed, I recommend that you do uh, a grouping and only indicate a few rocks in the foreground. And the rest become just, you know, um, dabs of colors uh, when you paint it. So demonstration, now I'm going to stop the share and show you how to do this. Where's my photo? Here it is. Okay. And I'm gonna point it towards um, towards my book so you guys can see. So I was tempted to use this since this is how you also started. Um, you can see this. I'm just going to go a little closer. I can see better. All right, so this is where the rocks are in my overall drawing. Um, in, I'm going to first show you here. So if you see from here on, you can't really distinguish the rocks. So in this area, I just did you know, an overall uh, darker cloth. In the front here is where I indicate. Can you hear you, Claire? You can't hear me? Hear no, I, I you're can't. turned away, apparently. Ah, when you, turn, because you turn around, you can hear, but when you turn away, you can't. OK. Yeah. How about that right now? Is that good? No. Yeah. You can hear me OK. So. Yeah. I was indicating how here, if you look here towards the horizon line, all of this part of the rocks is just a gray area. Whereas here in the front, this is where you can see that the rocks are, you know, there's a darker side, there's a, a mid tone side, and there's a very light side. Okay, okay. Can, you, can you hear me okay? No. No? Well, it sounds, um... It doesn't sound like you. Okay. 
I think I changed something on. So if I share my screen again, if I show you the photo, you can see here this rock here. It's like a rectangle. Whereas this one here, it's like a little triangle. Yeah. And this one is round. So these are three nice shapes to capture as rocks, rather than try to capture every single rock that you see here, you get quickly overwhelmed. So capturing like these three rocks will be sufficient. So now I'm going to draw these rocks on a new piece of paper and I'm going to draw them big, just so you can see. Bless you. So if you, um, I hope you will be able to hear when I talk, but I'm going to talk very little. And I'm going to demonstrate instead of talking. And I'm just going to make it big. Let's imagine this is where my rock wall is, right here, between this wedge. Because I'm recording, if you feel like you're making noise, could you please uh, mute yourself? So I'm starting with the rectangular rock here. And I know that on the right hand side, that's where the shadow is. And in front of it, there's another rock. So I'm just gonna put it like this. So this is my first rock where I have shadow in the back, shadow on the side. In front of it, there is another rock that I made sure I did not make the same shape as the original one. So I made it a little pointy. So that's my rectangular one. Now I'm going to capture the, uh, the triangular rock. And the triangular rock has some, some kind of a side here. And it's got a, also a darker area here. And then we're, I'm going to capture the round rock.
made it too big. Decided to put one more rock in between. So, so far, I've captured the darks and the very lights of the rocks. And now that I have indicated these three rocks, now I can remove this line that I had drawn um, because this was just a line to indicate approximately where, where these rocks would be. So I'm just going to erase this. Looks a little funny. And then the rest, the rest of this is going to be um, just a grouping of rocks that will be mid-tone. So I'm just going to put that all as mid-tone. Now, here we have some water on this side. And in order to delimit the edge of these rocks, I'm going to make the water darker on this side. And to do this, I'm going to put my book upside down, just because I'm a right hand person. This is a trick that I used to use when I was a kid. I remember when I was in little school, when I wanted to draw something and not go over the line, as I'm drawing, I would put my nail along the line and every time it touches the line, uh, my nail, it wouldn't go over the line. So that's what I'm doing here. Like say I wanna go over and, and Darken on the right hand side of this line here. This is what I do. See how it didn't go over the line. It's just a little trick. As I'm going up on my page here, I'm going lighter.
now that I've put the water, I made the water darker. It delimits, you know, those, those rocks. But it's important that we have a dark area of the rock like here, that I make it either darker or lighter than the water. So it's, it's a better delimitation between the two. Now I'm gonna use my 4B to do this, just because a 4B is darker than the HB. I have a very sh short 4B for the darkest areas. So in the, on the right-hand side of the rock, that's where I put the darkest. And then here, it's not quite as dark, Although where this rock meets this rock, that's where I'm gonna make it darker. So I'm gonna only make it darker at the bottom, like here. And a rock is very rarely completely uh, white. Um, so I'm going to give it a little bit of tone on top. And when I indicate the tone, I don't necessarily put, I don't necessarily draw in the same direction every time. This allows for the rock to give some shape to the rock. The fact that, you know, the, the mid tone is indicated in draw in different directions. If you find you've drawn too dark, you can always use your needle eraser. Just press. And it will take away some of the lead, but not all of it. So now my rocks are starting to shape up in like this one here. You can see a very dark line around the contour. I would try to avoid doing that. I'm trying to, for my demonstration, I'm using very dark lines so that you can see it well, but I would avoid those because then it looks like it's pasted on rather than the actual um, rock like it looks on the photo. So using my kneaded eraser, I can try and soften these, these lines. The other trick to try and soften these lines is to put a shadow on the rock that next to it.
then for the rest of the rocks, these ones here that are kind of like nondescript can indicate a line here or there, but that would be sufficient to define those. And of course, this line that we drew with the ruler, you can probably soften that and make this a little bit less straight and it will help. So now we've got a rock wall that is, it really pretty much looks like a rock wall, except um, I've only drawn a few rocks in the front, in the foreground. All right. All right. So your homework will be to finish your drawing and trace it onto your watercolor paper. Now, if you prefer, you can finish your drawing on your, in your sketchbook and just lightly draw, you know, the main areas onto your watercolor paper in preparation for painting next week. So during the class next week, you'll need at least two sheets of watercolor paper because we will do an exercise that will be graded wash and flat wash. And also we will start painting our landscape. And the following week, we will finish painting the landscape. Now, if you feel like you're an expert and uh, you might finish the whole painting next week, the following week, you can paint something else of your choosing. Or if you don't like this subject matter at all, like it's not <laughs> for you and you would prefer to paint something else next week, you're welcome to do so as well. Well, for more.